Sounds like the elevator doors are jammed. Mr. Cruz? Mr. Cruz. Oh, God. Oh, God. Mr. Cruz's life insurance policy. Why did he have this on him? Is this about Paul? Does that mean... Let there be someone around who can help. <gasps> Hello? Is anyone in? Hello? I. Hold on to this, maybe. Poor Paul. Lindsay's death really hit him hard. He hasn't been in the best headspace. Oh, so Paul's work with Marcella was to follow her around like a private investigator, to help her with research for her novel. Fuse box. Just get to the fuse box in the janitor's closet, Sophie. It's not far. I'll need that worked, thank God. Now, like how did this end up here? Eugene, what I would give to have you with me right now. <sighs> Your note will have to make do.
does Eugene do this again? Fuses. I probably need new fuses. Mm. Yes, this is what I need. Maybe I need to move some things around. Maybe I need to move some things around. Nothing. Maybe I need to move some things around. Getting the fuse box open was half the battle. Now I need to take a look inside and fix what needs fixing. anything here that would help me. Power's back. Now, I should go down to the lobby. Call the police. Locking the stairs would be a bad idea. Is there anything I've forgotten? Once I leave this floor, I probably won't be able to come back.
phone. I, I need a phone. Beth? Where is everyone? Police service station 22. There's a there's a man dead. He's been murdered. I I need the police. Please stay calm, ma'am. Where are you right now? At the lobby. But the body, it's it's upstairs. Can you give me the address, please? Oh, um 11 1178 Drummond Street. All right, ma'am. Officers are on their way. <sighs> Thank you. Just have to wait for the police. Why does the VIP want to meet with Paul? Maybe he fell for his role playing and wants to hire him as a private investigator. So Anne and Marcella really are planning to run off together. Was what? Is this the brochure Beth was talking about? The one that came in the mail for Anne? Hey, you. Great timing, right? I'm thinking if we're lucky, Bernard will let us go home. No point in working in the dark. Sophie? B, you're not scared of the dark, are you? Hey, is everything okay? I found Mr. Cruz. Hector. Oh, you did? What was the bloke up to? You don't understand. I found his body. He's... Sit down, okay? You look like you're about to faint. Have you called the police? Yeah, they're... They're on their way. What happened? Was there an accident? No, I don't think so. Someone did this to him. You mean... Merde. Do you think it could have been Anne and Marcella? What about Paul? He and Hector were caught fighting. Hmm. The cops will want to talk to you. Know what you've seen. You need to be careful about what you tell them. If word of Anne and Marcella's affair gets out, they may put a label on them that will really hurt them. It might not even matter in the end if they did it or not. What are you saying? It's just... Cops like to go after people who are different. People like Anne, like Marcella, like me. You know, I was barely 20 when I was shoved into a police car for just hanging out with people who made me feel like I wasn't so messed up after all. What? Where did that happen? At the White Cat. It's supposed to be a safe space, but it gets raided by cops every now and then. I know Anne was caught at least once, too. Wait, you know her? Yeah, that's how I knew the answer to the riddle. I've never talked to her, but I've seen her a few times. Marcella and her? They're... They're just like me. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me with this. Maybe now you can understand why I care so much about you. 
I don't know if I'm feeling inspired by Anne and Marcella, or if it's the shock of being so close to an actual murder, but um, I'd really like for us to be more than just friends, Sophie. I'm not sure if I feel the same way or not. Oh. Okay, yeah. I mean, you have a lot to think about already. I don't want to add to that. The police is here. Just be mindful of what you tell them, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Miss Roy? Miss Roy? Miss Roy! Oh, sorry. I was distracted. I really need you to focus right now. I don't want to be here all night, and I'm sure you don't either. No. No, I don't. So, as I was saying, we're trying to ascertain the circumstances of Mr. Cruz's death. Can you tell me how you came to find the body? I... I was cleaning room 509 when I heard the elevator bell ring again and again and again. I thought maybe a child was playing with the doors, so I went out in the corridor, and that's when... that's when I saw him. All the blood and... Why was the elevator bell ringing? I'm sorry? You said you heard the elevator bell ring. Why was it ringing? I assume it wasn't a child after all. Well, Mr. Cruz's body was preventing the doors from closing. Really? When we found the body, it wasn't that close to the doors. Oh, um, the stairs are blocked because of the renovations, so the elevator's the only way out of the fifth floor. I... I had no choice but to move the body. Just a little. Ah, so that explains the traces we found. Thank you for clearing that up. So... What did you do after that? Well, um, that's when the power cut. So I had to go to the janitor's closet. To access the fuse box? Exactly. Hmm. I, I changed a few fuses and turned the power back on. But there's a lock on that box, isn't there? Did you have the key? No, I didn't. Only Eugene does. But I thought an ice pick might do the trick, so... I went to the ice machine to get one. Hmm. You're a size 7, I suppose. Um, yes I am. Why? What did you see when you went to the ice machine? There was... blood. A lot of it. Did you touch anything? I might have touched a few things. Just to figure out what had happened to Mr. Cruz. Of course you did. Why so many witnesses can't help but compromise the evidence is just beyond me. <sighs> anyway, what did you do after restoring the power? I took the elevator down to the lobby. That's where I called the police. Do you remember what you said to the operator? The exact words? I... No, I'm afraid I don't. You said there's a man dead He's been murdered. That's possible. What makes you so sure it was murder? I... I just assumed. What with all the... blood. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't believe that, Miss Roy. It's more than an assumption, isn't it? I'm not sure I understand what you... I know you like going through your guests' personal belongings. But we've found pictures of you snooping around. Oh. Now, unless you want me to arrest you for violating your guest's privacy, I suggest you tell me everything you know. All right. Let's start with the victim's wife, Marcella Cruz. Apparently, she left in quite a hurry this morning. What can you tell me about her? 
I don't really know anything. She just looks like a loving, caring wife. Really? That's odd, because we learned a lot about Mrs. Cruz when we went through her room. And let's just say that loving, caring wife are not the first words that would come to mind. Oh? She's a lesbian, involved in some sordid affair with the guest from room 507, Mrs. Beaumont. Have you ever witnessed them engaging in immoral behavior? What do you mean? I'm asking if you've seen them being, you know, intimate. No, I haven't. No. And did you hear them discuss their deviant ways in front of Mrs. Beaumont's son, perhaps? Imagine what kind of effect such perversion can have on a young child. No, I didn't hear anything. Did you hear them express their hatred of men? Did they ever talk about using violence against men? Did you hear them speak ill of Mr. Cruz? No, I didn't hear any of that. I'm sorry I can't be of more help. No, I'm sure you are. But we're not quite done yet, Miss Roy. We've learned from one of your colleagues that the victim had a fight with a guest named Mr. Spade. What can you tell me about him? I don't know much. Only that... he seems nice. Nice? I wouldn't be so sure. Oh? We found out that Mr. Spade is fresh out of a madhouse. When we called the place, they painted quite the picture of him. Did you ever see him display odd behavior in or around the hotel? No. I mean, we've all got our little quirks, don't we? Did he seem obsessed with Mrs. Cruz? A little, maybe, but... Obsessed enough to kill her husband? No. Nothing like that. We all have our obsessions. Me, for instance. I'm obsessed with celebrities and gossip magazines, and... You don't seem to understand, Miss Roy. Mr. Spade is not like you and me. He may look like us, but he's not. He's dangerous and needs to be taken off the streets. So tell me, did you ever see him be violent or aggressive? No, I didn't. I'm sorry, Miss Roy, but I just don't believe you. I think you know more than you've let on. Can I please leave? You can, but you'd better stay in town. I'm sure I'll have more questions for you very soon. Strangely chipper on the phone. That can't be a good sign. The atmosphere is so different in here. Will it ever feel like it used to? Empty. I guess all bookings are cancelled until further notice. Let's go see what Bernard wants. It'll probably be a while before the hotel reopens. Ugh, go to hell. Beth. Hey. Are you okay? I'm out of a job. But other than that, yeah, everything's just peachy. What? No, I... I hope you're luckier than I am. Come join me when he's done with you, all right? I'll be... questioning my life choices on the mezzanine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Ah, Miss Roy. Come in. I suppose you know why you're here? I'm not sure, actually. Your phone call was a bit vague. Yes, well, I prefer to have this conversation in person. We've been getting a lot of press lately, and not the good kind. I wouldn't expect you to understand the position I'm in, but I assure you, it's quite uncomfortable to have one's life's work blown away like that. 
All thanks to some sexual deviance and a nut job. <laughs> it's obvious to me now that I haven't been firm enough. For guests of such morals to be comfortable booking a few nights here and, and, and committing such a horrid act? <sighs> no, things need to change. This means elevating our standards to the highest possible level, and it starts with the people working here. It starts with you. With me? Yes. From what I've heard, you've been quite the exemplary maid lately. Clean rooms, satisfied guests. I take my job very seriously, sir. As you should. We'll see for the future, but for now, you'll be allowed to continue working here. Thank you. I'm not done. The police have finished their investigation and left a mess on the fifth floor. I want you to clean it up. You want me to go back there? Yes. Why not? I found a dead body on that floor. I... I'm not going back. I'll make this simple for you. If you don't do it, you're fired. You can't fire me. Because... Because I quit. <laughs> sure. I fire you, you quit. It's all the same to me. Just make sure to empty your locker before the end of the month. That'll be all. Hey. Hey. What a week. <laughs> yeah. So, what did Bernard want with you? Well, he was being kind of a jerk, so I quit. You what? I quit. I figured there was no point in staying if you were leaving. I appreciate the solidarity, but you really didn't have to do that. I think it's for the best. Did Bernard say why he was firing you? Ugh. He was going on and on about keeping deviants out of the hotel, so... <laughs> I may have lost my cool a little. A little? I told him I was one of those deviants he was so afraid of. He froze for a moment, then showed me the door. So, what's next for you? I think I'm done working under Bernard's or Linda's. Maybe it's time I become my own Bernard. Minus the fascism, of course. <laughs> I could see myself owning my own establishment. One that caters to the right kind of crowd. Believe it or not, I do enjoy the company of people. Just not, you know, the stuck-up, entitled clientele of this prestigious hotel. But maybe if I were behind the counter of, say, a bar instead of a reception desk. <sighs> I don't know. Is that silly? No, it's not. In fact, you'd be perfect for it. You're the most charming person I know. Thank you. I'm really glad we're friends. Me too. What do you think will happen to them? Who? Oh, sorry, my mind wanders sometimes. I meant Paul, Anne, and Marcella. Do you think they'll be released? Yeah, I think so. Paul will probably become a famed photographer. His portrait of you will be hanged at the Louvre, entitled The Inconspicuous Maid. It will sell for billions. <laughs> Is that so? Yeah. And Anne and Marcella will ride into the sunset on the back of two Appaloosas watching over their newly acquired ranch. They'll be constantly followed by their only sheep, <laughs> They'll call him Paul, for old time's sake. <laughs> I like that. I just want them to be happy. Hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. 